I don't, I don't know if it's going to work for general newspapers. It may work for some specialist segments, but it's, it's a huge threat because the revenue base of, of media, media, commercial media, is just being undermined by the new technology, which doesn't necessarily mean the media will disappear, but we're in a state of flux and transformation. No one knows we're heading out of it. I would argue that that is a, a good, strong reason why you need well-resourced, independent public broadcasters, because the resources for commercial media are actually being undermined, and good journalism, which I think we need from commercial media, um, is is being un being undermined as as the barriers to entry that created a cross subsidy. Basically, journalism was always cross subsidised by monopoly rents in, from publishing. When people who could afford to actually put in the investment to set up a newspaper would bring in the advertising, make the filthy lucre and then fund journalism, which didn't necessarily actually create any revenue, but had a higher public purpose. An extraordinary I don't know what model. you're talking about, because you know, the News Limited has based its, you know, an empire on, on news and information, selling that as its prime, you know, yeah. prime and as you're going to have to find new ways to do it. Well, now. largely because, you know, I don't think it's anywhere in the ABC's charter where it says, you know, you shall produce online current affair entertainment uh, so I don't see why taxpayers' money are going into public broadcaster, which was designed for an era where you know you couldn't get anything in the bush and da da da. da where today in this age, in this age, where the commercial sector is under a lot of tr tr pressure, why are taxes going to financing the ABC to go online? You can't stand the heat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, so, so Keith, so so Keith that <laughs> was making the same, same complaints about um, television yeah, and radio. No, we don't have time for any more questions. Apparently, uh, apparently they're going to kick us out of the room. Sorry about that. I know you had your hands up at the end there for a while, but these guys, you can't shut them up. Um, thanks very much. Thanks very much. When I um, did speak to Cheryl late last night, I said, look, I don't think the problem's going to get, be getting these two guys to talk, really. Uh, thank you very much, Cheryl and Michael and Stephen. Uh, to close proceedings formally, I'd like to invite the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Western Sydney, a great young university, uh, to formally close it, uh, Professor Janice Reid, who I have to say uh, is the signatory to the original agreement with Mr Whitlam and has been ever since that day our strongest supporter. John Phillips, our speakers, our panellists, Jeff Robertson, sponsors of today's event, ladies and gentlemen. I, I thought Eric was going to say a great young Vice-Chancellor, but um, <laughs> my heart soared and but then. Um, it is true that, uh, um, that we signed the agreement oh, almost 10 years ago with, with EGW, establishing the Whitlam Institute. And we shared at that time a dream that the Institute would acquire a prominent and lively place in public debate, in research, in analysis, and, um, and, and also in writing, in addition to its role as custodian of the Prime Ministerial Library. Um, at the time of signing a further deed of gift in 2003 for the transfer of his own personal papers and books to the library, Goff made the point that he didn't want the Whitlam Institute to be a mausoleum, his term, but a source of inspiration, research and advocacy, a living institution. And I think today's sym symposium goes to the heart of these aspirations. We've been very, very fortunate to have this opportunity to hear directly from those who are playing and have played major roles in the development, governance and stewardship of fiscal and monetary policy in this country and are responsible for overseeing it. So on behalf of us all, I would like most sincerely to thank Warwick McKibben, Bernie Fraser, Ken Henry in his absence and Gary Banks, firstly for their generosity in agreeing to speak today because their time is so valuable, but also for their respective addresses which were really very insightful and challenging and I think wandered a bit beyond um, this traditional brief which we expect and made some very um, incisive comments about society as it is at this point in time in Australia. I'd also like to thank very warmly Sharon Bagwell, Michael Stutchbury and Stephen Long. 
I expect that this evening or tomorrow's press will be full of praise for their commentary, um, unless, you know, it's eclipsed by um, less edifying events in another place, but I can't think what it might be. Um, I just want to venture a small correction to something Michael said. He said that Paul Keating described Australia as the arse end of Asia. Actually, that's not what he said. What he said was the arts end of Asia, <laughs> in recognition of our, um, our great role our, in, in cultural leadership throughout Asia and the Pacific. I'm sure that's what he said. Um, Eric likes to remind me that we operate on a shoestring much too often, Eric. Um, but um, the fact is that today wouldn't have been possible without the support of our sponsors, and I'd just like to mention them. Nicholas Moore and the Macquarie Bank, Chum Darvel and the Deutsche Bank, and Deutsche Bank, George Malteborough and Energy Australia, Harold Mitchell and Mitchell Communications Group, Jean Pratt and the Pratt Foundation, and Kim Williams and Foxtel. And I'd also like to thank the ongoing support, for his ongoing support, Bruce Hawker and Hawker Britain. It's always our desire to make Whitlam Institute events accessible to as many people as possible and their sponsorship has also enabled us to invite some community leaders, important individuals um, on whom the University of Western Sydney so much relies to this event today and I hope they too enjoyed themselves. I'd like to thank our Chancellor for his patronage of this event. He has been involved from the very first day of its conception in making it happen um, and John's persuasion has obviously been very effective if, if, the, if the day is evidence of this. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge John Lodowich and the UWS School of Economics and Finance, and also Nick Whitlam, whose personal commitment um, has been very important in getting this day together. Um, to the management and staff of the Intercontinental, thank you for your patience and kindness in helping to organise this event. And Finally, we've been delighted to have you all here at a crazy and frenetic time um, in Australian public life. This is obviously the most important thing that's happening by, and the evidence is those of you who have come today and you haven't been on your, your Blackberries and your iPhones, I'm sure, seeing what's happening. But it's, it's wonderful to have you. We thank you all very warmly and we look forward to seeing you in 2010. Thank you.